Welcome back to the software engineering channel guys. In today's video, I'm going to show us how to dynamically render CSS in Blazor. So if you've worked with front-end frameworks like Angular, you must have seen things like ng class and you must have seen how that magic works with Angular. So it is so easy, so intuitive to do this with Angular and also with React. It is as easy as angular as well all you need to do is to add in your conditions and do all of those fun jsx stuff but in blazor it becomes a little bit difficult to do so for blazor the only solution i came across is to manually concatenate your string which for me i think can be a lot of edits so in the course of working on the slack clone by, by the way if you've not seen the slack clone video we're currently working on a slack clone project using angular blazor wow did i just say angular <laughs> that was a mistake using blazor tailwind css signal r so you can check up the video suggested to you right now and see how that's going so yeah I'm I'm going to be showing us the solution i came across and how i was able to solve this problem let's dive right in guys okay so i have a blazor server project there is a, uh, there's nothing special i've done all i have is what is given to you out of the box when you newly create a blazor server project the only thing i did was to rename your counter page to dynamic rendering okay and also what i basically did was to rename this button and i added an image so the next thing i'm going to do is to add the nuget package that i'm going to be using for this functionality and the nuget package is called tool belt you might as well not worry about the rest but it's actually called tool belt dot web dot css class inline builder that's what it's called and we're going to be installing it I have it installed already so you can get yours installed once you're done with that the next thing for you to do is to go into your underscore imports dot razor file and you want to pop in your tool belt namespace into your imports dot razor file and make sure you had the static keyword that is very important so the next thing for us to do is to go back into our page which is our pure rendering page for yours it's, it's going to be your counter page yeah it's nothing special the only thing i did as i said is to add an image so what i basically want to do is to render this image based on some conditions right um, and the logic is when our current count which is our variable that increments each time we click on the button i want and if the image to be rendered when it gets to a certain count and i want the image to be hidden when it gets to a certain count so that is what we're basically going to be doing but before we do that i might as well just show you the way the library works so all you need to do is to pop in your at sign at symbol and do css class and yeah that's it you have the library already in and basically you could actually there are a lot of variants um, by which you could actually use this um, library so the first is actually concatenating different separated comma text together so by this what it's going to basically do is to concatenate all of this together and pop it in into your class if that's the functionality you're looking for obviously i'm not sure this class is the best option for you you can easily do that by manually concatenating because Another thing you must notice is that there is a slight overhead on this library. It uses reflection. That might cause a little bit of drag. But trust me, there's been some optimization internally in the library. Um, things like catch is being used so to improve the performance. So I'm sure the degradation in your application isn't going to be, it's going to be very minute and insignificant. But you have to be sure that you actually need it to use it. For cases like this, I bet that you do not need this library to do this where you actually need the library and note the library does not only work for this case it works for many other cases as well I think five different cases this particular case that I'm going to be showing you is the day-to-day -day developer case which I'm which is what I'm really interested in I'm going to pop in the link to the documentation of the library below and you can go check the rest for yourself okay so the way it works is that you pop in a new keyword and we just type in an, um, a variable now i'm going to be doing d none and because i have d none i also have to instantiate 
a variable called denon denon which is going to be of a boolean type now i'm going to make this false now note that i'm using camel case casing here so the what css class library is going to do is that it's going to take this particular variable and render it in this format it's going to render it in this format so basically what it's doing is, is separating the two texts with hyphen using the camel casing all right so because none is starting with a capital letter it's going to pop in an hyphen in between d and n because n is starting with capital letter how about i just show you directly so you see for yourself okay so because this is false is obviously not going to show because that, that's the essence of the conditional rendering right um but let's set this to true so in setting this to true this is going to pop in class equal to d hyphen no let's see how that works so you will notice that all of a sudden my image isn't displaying but my image is right in my browser we can confirm that by checking our console so yeah there you go so you can see d none over here and you will notice that obviously your d none is a bootstrap utility that does display none and that's why we don't have it here so the, yeah that's the idea so the idea is basically to use your code logic to toggle toggle a particular boolean which in return serves as the class you want to pop into your elements so going back to our logic we want our image to be displayed on certain counts and to be hidden on a particular count so i'm just going to i'm going to quickly initialize all of these counts so i'll do show image counts to be equal to two that means that means on getting to two i want my image to be displayed i'll do hide image count to be equal to five it means on getting to five i want my image to be hidden so i'll just do if statements if current count equal show image count do d non equals false and if current counts equal to hide image counts we can do d non equal equals true and yeah there you have it so yeah i want my denon to be equals false on first load so we can see our image okay so we can actually do true since our image is actually going to show when it gets to two and our image is expected to be hidden when it gets to five so let's see if that works okay so our image is hidden on first load and you can confirm that that is because our d none is set to true and because our d none is set to true we have that utility class on our image which does display none so when we do our count one two you'll notice that our image is displayed and the reason why our image is displayed is because d none has been set to false and that's why we can show our image and because denon is false the library is not going to display denon hence the conditional rendering concept and now once our image gets to five our image is hidden again and the reason why our image is hidden is because we have denon popped into our image element so guys um it's just a quick one this is how to handle conditional rendering 
in blazor so let me know in the comment section below what you guys use to achieve this concept if this is the first time of you popping into this channel it's a software engineering channel where we learn all things software engineering so do well to subscribe if that resonates with you and also do well to give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful thank you guys right about that see you on the next one bye bye